So maybe if we go through some of the early lessons, um, we can we can talk about them. And if, if you have any questions, please bring them up because um, these are are like the, the roof. These are the, the, the basis of the whole thought reversal that Jesus is trying to help the mind come about. That a lot of times people the, the early lessons don't make a lot of sense to them, so they quickly get back in the book to some that they can use for affirmation. You know, like I am as God created me, and it's like, well, I have no I have a clue what he's talking about those early lessons, so <laughs> I like the way this one sounds. But but these early ones are, it's kind of like um, bringing oneself to, to true humility or to a sense of humbleness, that I'm like a little child who's not seeing clearly at all. And I need, to, I need to recognize that before I'm willing to, to, to learn to see a different way. If I think I already know, then I'm seeing okay as it is, and I'm not going to be open to have somebody teach me how to see, yeah. see differently. Little if, if you look at, okay, I'm conditioned, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm conditioned by my past. And so, like the movie example, or Eddie Murphy Raw, everyone's seeing something based on their past. That a lot of times we've, We've learned the idea that, that the reason where this condition comes from is that we've been taught it. Okay? You might have heard the old thing about the, the baby infant comes in, you know, like a blank slate or pure and innocent and everything, and then starts learning, you know, from, from the word go about things. You know, touch something that's hot and, and house or, you know, learning from experience, learning from their parents, learning from their siblings, from their peers at school know, advertising, so on and so forth. But you see, the course goes one step beyond that because, you know, once again, we're back, if that's the case, we're back to victimization. <laughs> we're a pawn of these external things, you know. It's kind of like, well, you had great parents growing up. You know, great, no wonder you feel so great. Look at me, you know. You, there's always another excuse then for your conditioning was better than my conditioning. <laughs> so, therefore, I've got a better, a worse problem than you or... And it's still, that, that ultimately, the, what's the, the underlying content of the idea is that I'm still a victim of my environment. What the Course is saying is that those beliefs, the conditioning actually begins in the mind, and that literally the, the things that seem to happen to us as persons are in the world are just witnesses that are called forth by the mind from those beliefs. So if I believe I'm guilty, I will call forth witnesses on the screen and say, you're guilty. So, oh, I knew it. See, that just reinforces it. That proves it. And, and it's kind of a scam because until you can see that the problem's in the mind, the problem has everything to do with my thoughts and my beliefs and nothing to do with these events that I thought happened to me, you know, then, then there's no escape from it. It just, seems, it just continues to reinforce. And we all have the guilt, and including somebody that looks like a baby. They have to, because they brought that mind with them when they came in, and so it's, just, it's like I know I was always fooled by that, you know, by the little body. Well, <laughs> disregard the little body; they're a mind, <laughs> you know, just like my mind. You know, it hasn't learned, like you say, all the all the learning that's taken place in the world side but it still has that mind, it still has that, that core of guilt that it's projecting out in its world and, it, and it's calling forth what it is. It's also, too, the thing about, you were saying, like bringing the mind in. If you, have, you, you may need to grab a metaphor that you can use because sometimes you can think of, if the soul comes in or a mind comes in, then you, know, you get back to the question, well, where does the soul go or the mind go? You know, and go. Jesus kind of describes the mind as this vast, powerful thing that just, you know, it just is. It, it's not contained in anything. So, and the mind of God and the mind of Christ are, are infinite. So it may be another helpful metaphor to think of this mind as like watching, you know, the, the, the old analogy of watching uh, channel, changing channels on TV. But just keep changing the channel, changing the channel, looking at the channels and trying to find more witnesses to guilt. And the mind will sit there literally and continue to change the channels until finally it gives up the guilt. And there's no need 
for the TV screen anymore. You know, there's no need to even change the channels and everything. In that sense. Mm -hmm. Also, too, you know, we we will use a lot of metaphors, and and Jesus describes it in here as if, you know, um, there are individual minds. That you're, it's like you have a mind, and you're, every one of your brothers has a mind. You know, I just want to mention at this point that that's a metaphor as well, because you know. He knows that when the mind is deceived, it believes in bodies. And it's a pretty big stretch to even start to talk about this thing called mind and thoughts, because who's seen a mind? Who's seen a thought? But, but it, so it's kind of like he gives that as a metaphor. But in the ultimate sense, there's, there's only one mind. And that's where we get back to everything's a projection out of mind of mind. Because if you get back to those passages, or the very end of the teacher's manual where they pose the question to Jesus, how many teachers of God does it take to save the world? You know, 1,000, 2,000, 3 million, you know, one. <laughs> one teacher. One teacher to save the world. How could that even begin to make any sense unless there was just one mind that was, that was messed up? And it's mine. <laughs> and it's my perceptual problem and that when I accept his answer, then the world is safe, you know. That flies against our thinking of, you know, it's going to take trillions of years and, you know... Hundreds of monkey theory. Hundreds of monkey theory, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take lots of teachers and it may take millennium and so on and so forth. But basically it brings us back to the idea that there's a, there's a hallucination going on there. This is it. And I can, I can step, I can learn another way of perceiving the world. And that way bring an end to the hallucination. That's a, that's, a, that's a big leap, though. We're talking a big, I mean, this may be an idea that your mind is already starting to flip flop on and go, <laughs> you know, it can't be, but but this is kind of what Jesus is leading us to, is this perceptual problem that he's got So if we go to, to lesson number one, talk about the really kind of starting to take the underpinnings out of <laughs> I was waiting to think you do things right away. <laughs> and and if we go into lesson one, you know, it's helpful to even if you read or reread this uh, just the introduction, just for, to look how he talks because you know some of these ideas, some of the ideas the work we present you will find hard to believe, right? You know? <laughs> and others you may may seem quite to be quite startling. This does not matter. You are merely asked to apply the ideas that you are directed to do. You are not asked to judge them at all. You are asked only to use them. It is their use that will give them meaning to you and will show you that they are true. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. This isn't some highfalutin theoretical course of miracles. He's given us a practical tool. Just like a practical tool in the kitchen. You can, you've got a practical tool to use and you can just carry these ideas wherever you are, whatever you seem to be doing. So the very first one, nothing I see in this room, on the street, from this window, in this place, means anything. And, you know, to the ego, that's, it's a ludicrous idea. It's, you know, you know, what, that's all I know is meaning in, in this world, you know, of things mean. That's what all my education has been about both in the home and through society or through, you know, books and everything else, I've been taught what things mean. From even, you know, ball, chair, table, <laughs> transportation system, you know, computer lingo and all this <laughs> it seems to get more complicated, but basically all that's just meaning. And um, just to take the idea and to try to apply it indiscriminately to everything you see. And it's, you can see this is one of those undoing kind of things of thinking that, that I know what everything means and know what I'm seeing. Also, I want you to notice on these lessons as we go through that, that some of the lessons are directly related to perception. In other words, he'll say, nothing I see. He's talking about literally perceiving you know, the, the table, the chair, the hand, the foot. And a lot of the ideas that we're going to go through are going to be related to thinking. So you'll see a seeing 
idea? Oh, a thinking idea. Or a couple seeing ideas, and he throws in a thinking idea. And the purpose of this is to, to try to convey the sense that they're very much connected. <laughs> that, you know, in the deceived state, it seems like there's a world, objective world out there, and I've got a private mind. And what I'm thinking doesn't necessarily have any influence on what's going on in the world, what my friend is thinking, or or what Bill Clinton's thinking, or more more than that, not so much what other people are thinking, but but there's a, a connection. You know, that if I think happy thoughts, that the world will suddenly be a happy place. It's, it's, he's trying to train us that that they're intimately connected, instead of being seven. So the second one is, is the, just the basis for what we've been talking about, about I have given everything I see, so on and so forth in this room, and from this window, this place, all the meaning that it has for me. And that's that basic perceptual law that we've just been talking about. That, that when you see things on the screen, when you have an opinion about something or a conclusion or this is what I, this is what it means to me. I don't know what it means to you. That's still that um, projecting out and giving meaning to the images. The mind is assigning meaning to the images. Yeah. It's a cool day. Okay. I decide that it's a cool day. It seems to me that I find 300 people or more that agree with me as I stop them on the street every day. It's a cool day. It is a cool day. It's a cool day. Well, it's like mass hypnosis. <laughs> it seems like there's an objective world out there and there's 300 witnesses that will say, you know, it's a cool day. I have given everything I see, all the meaning it has to Cool is an idea in my mind. There is no intrinsic or, or there is no cool in and of itself. You know, you know we think we have barometers that can measure it. <laughs> To make it more objective, cool is still in my mind. Or it's like the Ron's little boy, Matthew, um, he, you know, he, his perception. One time I was here visiting and um, we got up, it was like late May or early June, you know. And two weeks after the ice was off the bay. Two weeks after the ice was off the bay and we went down and uh, for, for a walk by the bay and he got all his shirt off and everything and just, just hopped in and everything. And, and he kept popping up and looking at me, and he said, come on, David, get in here. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the water. And he said, come on, get in here. You know, and, and I said, how's the water? And he said, it's great. You know? And this went on for like five minutes. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I have given everything I see all the meaning. You know, you know, I don't know if you've heard of, when I was taught psychology, I showed this film of um, uh, an Eastern yogi. That folks come over in India somewhere, and they they brought him over to study him in the Western world. You know? yeah. And so they've got this yogi, in, and it's on a film, you know, and then he's got this big yeah. string on, and they put him in this ice tank, you know, <laughs> and they lower it down to like below zero and everything, and they and they leave him in there for hours, and you know he's just in there just smiling away, just as content as possible. You know, it was a, it was a good witness for this kind of mind over matter thing, you know. Cold is not in the mind, but then, <laughs> then it isn't. <laughs> if you know, if you can refrain from judging, that's that world of duality again: hot, cold, you know, fast, slow, and all that stuff we've been talking about. But these are are not ideas from God. This, these are made up, fictitious ideas. And as we start to withdraw our mind from them, then it's the witness is you know, it's nothing is a witness for for that. So you know, it's. It's that thing, mind over matter again, that's really what it comes down to. And the, and the way, as we see, the more the way to give them up is to quit judging, quit believing in them. So, the third lesson is kind of like the first one in some ways. I do not understand anything I see in this room, on this street, from this window, in this place. It's another one of those um, just very humbling things to... Um, just 